All right. Hello and welcome, everyone. So today we are going to talk about the free to play through where it's at right now. Uh, important things that I've learned along the way, my perspective on the new player experience, uh, and kind of just really talk a lot about what new players are going to be encountering in general uh, and like the barriers that are in front of them for things that they want to do and how to either take those down or like where we're going with getting to taking those down um, and just general advice for progression up to the point where I'm about at. I would say I'm pretty much about to reach kind of the mid game where there's a lot of like tool building and arsenal expansion for problem solving that needs to occur such as like you know grabbing necromechs and certain specific weapons that are scenario based for certain grinds and things of that nature um and we're kind of exiting the i need to generally be a certain level of power because i feel as though i have reached that general level of power for the main star chart and also I think I meet the base requirements for investing in Seal Path once we get there. With that, let's go over some basic stuff. Obviously, I have Zephyr Prime here, but I want to quickly talk about the Warframes that I have used along the way and how good they have been to me so far. So for that, uh, we have Mag, which was our starter. We have Rhino, who we, of course, got afterward. And then I have the two Prime frames that I have built, Ivara Prime and Zephyr Prime. Zephyr Prime, we traded one piece of Nidus on release, uh, of his prime access and bought the entire Zephyr prime set. There's a lot of detail to go into with Zephyr. So I'm going to go into that last, but Zephyr is a really big, important point of what we're going to be talking about here. Let's just start from the beginning. Mag started as Mag. Uh, I think Mag is an excellent starter. She is a very, very high quality starter. Uh, she uses just fleeting expertise and then range mods to great effect in order to both survive and also clear low level maps for farming really really impressed with mag overall uh, i think she is a phenomenal starter that is on par with xcal do i think that xcal and mag could be better absolutely we all know that xcal has problems especially at late game when you know his three being useless etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, and i think mag is actually probably of the starters the closest to being kind of the ideal and what i mean by that is that she just has some energy economy problems where she doesn't get to use her kit even though she's probably the warframe that's most predisposed as a starter to use her kit a shit ton um and that's mostly occurring because on her one she has this effect which is the drop chance ability which means if this ability kills someone it has that percent chance for them to drop an energy orb this would be good if it wasn't a kill effect if it was just like a proc that you put on the enemy for a certain amount of time that would a make fleeting expertise a, a little worse for this ability which is fine i think it's fine for mag to maybe want to build a little bit of duration if she can't kill enemies super super fast um but that drop and then also that drop chance is based on strength which is also a thing which is good uh but if that drop chance was a proc that you just stuck to enemies whenever you pulled them and then killing them would still give you that chance for a few seconds I think that would do a whole lot for Mag's energy economy, especially really early on before you get Fleeting Expertise, before you're in Xenoric, before all that stuff. Just with that change, I think she would by far be the best starter just because she'd have a lot more freedom with what she's able to do and bring to the table. Uh, Magnetize. Few criticisms of abilities here in terms of just being a starter. Uh, the big thing here is that it's explosion radius uh, and just it's, you know, how, how big it is in general, like the radius of it. Uh, I think that this needs to be standardized across all the levels of the ability. Level zero of magnetize is completely useless simply because the bubble is not, it's a, it's a nothing sized bubble. It's itty bitty, teeny tiny, completely useless. I think that it should always be its max range that it gets at rank three. I think all the other stats are fine, uh, leveling up through the ranks, but I think like Rhino's, uh, roar, it should be standardized to be the max duration always. Uh, because Rhino's Roar at all levels is 30 seconds. I think this should have range as the stat that it kind of is the same across at all levels. And that's really just a criticism of her as a starter. Obviously, people that are using her for farms late game, you're going to have rank three of this ability always. Um, but I really do think that Magnetize needs its max range. Always that you're incentivized to use this even early on for more things. Uh, Polarize. So this is basically a cheap way to put your shields back on when there's not a lot of enemies around you. Uh, I think this is totally fine. Do I think that like the uh, static armor stripping that this has is good late game? No, definitely not. I think that you replace this with Hildren's ability a lot of the time or like, you know, the um, our Embers 3. There, there's a bunch of things that you replace this with 
uh, late game, in my opinion. Uh, but early game, it's fine. Snap your fingers, put your shields back on, your shield gate is back. We're out here doing it. We're alive. Uh, Crush. Crush, by far her best ability as a starter as it stands right now. This puts shields back on you, and it kills all the enemies around you. Uh, and that's even, even with minus 60% strength that I'm getting from using overextended right now. This can farm enemies on Earth. Like, it's still killing them whenever I hit four. Uh, and that doesn't sound super important, but because Excavation on Earth is actually a really good early game relic farm, if you want to go that way, and maybe you need Cryotic for some certain things too, uh, this is really solid for that. Apollodurus, Venus, kind of the same story. Uh, Mars, uh, once you get to um, later planets than that, or except for Phobos, you can do Phobos too, uh, the minus 60% you're getting on Strength from Overextended is going to start, like, going to going to be more visible you're probably gonna have to cast twice but even then that's still fine because for those hits you're still going to get your shields back which is the major point here crush phenomenal ability uh great fourth ability to have much better much much better than volts for in terms of early game player accessibility really like this obviously it falls off later and becomes you know more of like a crowd control tool uh and something that is just going to give you some shields really late game and for that you know you're going to probably switch to like Hildren's two ability and putting that in place of her three and, and things of that nature uh but really like this ability as a starter really good stuff if you added any kind of scaling or anything to this I think it could perform late game as well because I mean it is a nice AoE obviously everything is always up to the numbers whether it progresses into late game stuff overall really like where Mag is right now as a starter I think she's maybe the best pick moving on of course we have Rhino now I speculated that I might not want to go for Rhino uh, early on in the free to play through I talked about it a lot like maybe going for Neja because I do think that Neja as it stands right now is a better Warframe than Rhino that both requires less and performs better however for a new player I think you just keep it simple like just just keeping it simple I think is maybe the right option just get Rhino like we always have uh he's just an absolute just he's a crowbar you can just apply him to anything and he's gonna solve the problem or kill it and that's usually the problem is that it's alive so it's just a, he's just a really phenomenal warframe that's so easy to put together you can put him together mega early by the time uh you have uh the demo like by the time you're looking at like demos which is just over by mars you're grabbing him really easily the plastics are the hardest part of him to build which are highly accessible on demos we'll talk about that also more in this video uh but yeah rhino he's just a house he's what you're going to want to use for putting all the keys on yourself if you don't have other people to play with and run those vaults with uh he can do it with no mods on him just rank him to 30 no mods on him he can run those corrupted vaults really easily if you've got a vectus built which is an mr1 weapon so like you should have a vectus built which we're also going to talk about in a second um but yeah i have a video on farming the corrupted vaults with a completely unmodded rhino and just doing that shit go watch that video if you want to do that it's a great way to get up to power levels where you're going to be able to make much more use of ivara and zephyr prime now, Ivara Prime is a tool for more specific farms. And it's worth noting here, uh, before we continue, I did use my starter plat, the, the full 40 of my 50 starter plat, on two Warframe slots. This is because the current Night Wave gave me two weapon slots. So I didn't feel the need to grab any weapon slots with my starter plat and just went for more Warframe slots. And that has worked out very well for me so far. I haven't had to get rid of Mag or Rhino. Uh, so yeah, Ivara, great. Fantastic Warframe. She is mainly useful for two things. Number one, she's really good at hunting because her sleep arrows on Quiver, the sleep arrows, you mod, you know, like for a good radius, use overextended and stuff, and then give yourself a little boost in duration after using fleeting expertise and streamline to make your energy drain very, very low. You can stay invisible for long periods of time. Your arrows cost very little. Uh, all that good stuff. You shoot the sleep arrows at the animals. They all go to sleep. There's bugs on the Vasca Cavats right now where they immediately wake up. But I expect that to be fixed at some point because it's very clearly a bug. Uh, for all the other animals, they just immediately snooze. If you hit the arrow and anywhere in their vicinity, you get a bunch of perfect captures. And it's a great way to get rep or, you know, like progress on getting sun tokens uh, on Deimos. And it is by far the best way to get rep in the Plains of Eidolon, which we'll circle back to. But yeah, really, really versatile ability for like you know, getting rep in the open worlds and stuff. And also, in addition to that, Ivara allows you to really easily do the Samaris rep grind. So I'm going to talk about the Samaris rep grind really quickly. Basically, for the Samaris rep grind, you need the synthesis scanner. And you can see here, I already have infinite synthesis scans. This is a very important upgrade. It's the first one you should get. It's called the Soul Battery Widget that you can get from Samaris. It costs 50k rep. 
which is not that hard to get because you invest a little bit of credits into this, which we're going to talk about credits in a minute. You get enough synthesis scanners, which I think you'll need in the total amount of charges. I think I needed to get 20 K rep or to get the rep necessary after the intro quest for Samaris, I think was like about 210 or so. So it's really not that many that you need overall. And then you do a specific run. There's a specific run that you do with Avara that I am going to make a separate video on, but basically the basics of it are you go invisible and then you go to the Kuva fortress and you either do exterminate you can do exterminate or like you can you can kind of pick and choose any of the like longer missions you can go through mobile defense if you want to but I wouldn't suggest it normally I go to I go to Dakota uh you go to this exterminate and you basically run through the mission and scan all the enemies because they're worth 200 rep a piece and there's over 100 enemies there and also all the turrets and cameras in the level are also worth over 200 rep a piece so you can rack up that rep extremely quickly just by walking through the level invisible and just scan 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 take a picture of everything you see walk to the end of the level kill all the guys really easily because you're Evara, and then bing bang boom you're done in eh, 10, 10 minutes probably takes about 10 minutes to do your uh, samaris rep that way you can do it much faster whenever you're more experienced at it uh but early on probably gonna take you about 10 minutes and that's great samaris rep very important reasons it's very important number one you get the soul battery widget uh, so you get unlimited so it stops costing you anything to do the farm in addition to that the mods that come from samaris nobody farms them and they're all worth like 60 plat or more so basically every like five or so days that you do the farm you can sell any of those mods and make like 60 to 100 platinum because no one wants to do the farm it's super easy you just take 10 minutes to just throw at it if you're a new player if you're looking at 60 platinum for you know five days of doing a little 10 minute farm it's like 50 minutes of your time to get like three Oroken catalysts or whatever or whatever you happen to need that's like in like the 20 plat range get a pack of forma do whatever you want uh and that's that's just value it's just value to do it can you also go after the samaris targets for sure by all means do that but getting your whole rep done in one mission and not having to like run around and find these targets and do all this other stuff it's really convenient I'm gonna make a whole video that's just on doing that uh with Ivara but it's a great farm that more people should probably be doing granted more people to do it the less platinum it's going to be worth but I think it's going to generally be worth it because I think a lot of people aren't going to want to do it other notes uh also Ivara very very powerful because she has the Artemis bow it turns out the Artemis bow is pretty good uh because even if you don't have let's say for example even if you don't have a um a uh, reactor in your Avara which this build works perfectly fine for everything I'm doing with her with no reactor on the prime uh and honestly on the non-prime I think all you're really doing is you probably can't afford to run um you're probably having to drop streamline and then you probably drop stretch and that's still extremely usable like you're still using that for like all the purposes I am the prime definitely more convenient the prime you can also you know it's worth investing in Navara if you like her for sure prime fantastic also hilariously easy to grind right now it was no problem I accidentally got Navara while farming for Anitis prime fantastic it has worked out absolutely stellar for me great stuff she costs she's dirt cheap right now grab her but basically when she's unreacted you still get a fully reacted fucking Artemis bow and this thing comes with two V polarities. So we're looking at like a very powerful build here. <laughs> like we're getting 75% crit chance, 4.4 multiplier. We're looking at viral heat. Like we got hunter munitions on this thing. Like th this is a house and I could upgrade serration all the way up to rank eight still. And I actually it could be maxed even. And I, I wouldn't suggest that. I wouldn't suggest ever taking serration above rank eight at this point in the game, just due to like the way things shift whenever you get to higher up. Um, but this is stellar it's a really really powerful build to be able to apply to situations where you might not otherwise have a solution for things uh such as farming the domas in the plains of Eidolon turns out the Artemis bow really solid at killing them so if you want to hunt them down and get the resources that come out of them which is like you know good fish parts and all this other stuff Artemis bow great for that would suggest so yeah great things there uh, Artemis bow definitely a huge boon there because it's a very powerful ability uh so yeah Ivara great pickup fantastic choice the prime is easier to get than the regular one at this point so definitely pick her up Zephyr Zephyr the absolute house Zephyr just recently got buffed just her airburst got buffed and cleaned up uh to be a better ability 
literally the video for this is not even actually how this ability works anymore. I think that Zephyr is the number one most accessible highest power Warframe in the game at this point. In terms of how hard it is to build Zephyr, in terms of both getting her and getting the mods for her and all the resources that she wants in order for you to build her, she cost nothing. She is dirt. It, I, it was one Nidus part on release, which is only 60 platinum. And I spent 50 to get her full set very easily. She costs nothing and she's absolutely broken. This build can also, very notably, if you can't get the Prime for whatever reason, if this is the future and it's gone way up somehow, you can put this exact same build almost on regular Zephyr. Here are the only changes that you need to make to put this on regular Zephyr. Physique, which you get from a junction, by the way, so you're going to have it. There it goes. And we're going to drop Thieves' Wit, a mod that does not affect my combat at all. This is a convenience mod that I decided to equip because I could, because I have so many extra points. Legitimately, with the Prime, this is a no form of build, and I could upgrade to Primed Continuity when I get it. Like that's what we're that's what we're talking about here. Like we have we have just extra room. I have Cunning Drift in a main slot because I just want that super huge range and a decent amount of duration, max efficiency, and my strength. I can kind of just dump on. It is so good for a multitude of reasons. Number one, Turbulence, phenomenal ability. Great survivability, absolutely excellent, keeps you safe. That's what you want in a defensive ability is for you to not die. For one, Tailwind, good at traversing from place to place. Very nice, uh, very helpful, you know, it's just like traversing environments quickly and like just doing good stuff like that. It's especially helpful whenever you're not maybe not so good at like the parkour and stuff uh, and you need a little bit of help getting through some areas of the levels. I think as a new player, going to be very helpful to people. Not a bad ability at all. Also has a build around with an augment and stuff, but that's a different story. Then... We have Airburst. So newly reworked Airburst basically is Larva, but uh, it has a non-reduced range whenever we're talking about helmets, but we're not right now. And this scales in damage. So whenever you give this a big range like it has now, because we're built for max range, uh, this can actually clear low level missions. Like you just jump and hit two because it costs half energy whenever you jump while using this. If you're in the air at all, Airburst costs half energy. Very important. Uh, you just jump, hit two, it kills them all, or it puts them all into a nice, neat little ball for you to kill them all, which is excellent for running through missions. And in higher level stuff, we're looking at using Tornado. Obviously, Tornado is modal now. You can either tap it, and it'll send the Tornadoes out, and they'll just randomly target enemies, and they'll be wherever, which is useful in some cases, actually, depending on the tile set that you're on. But also, you can hold it and place the three Tornadoes in one specific location, and when you do that, you can utilize airburst to kind of increase the range of these tornadoes and like put it on the put the airburst on the edges it'll drag a bunch of enemies in from a large range in that direction and then they will slowly go into the tornadoes that you've set down in the middle of this area so you jump throw the tornadoes out cast an airburst at all the different corners it puts every enemy in your vicinity into the tornadoes and then these tornadoes scale damage in crazy ways with specific weaponry namely an mr8 I would highly advise people, if you're going down the Zephyr route, get a Fulman. A Fulman is excellent and scales well into Steel Path. This build that I have on Zephyr right now, plus this Fulman with just this, which is a one Forma build. This is the only thing I have spent Forma on on this entire account because it's worth it. With this one Forma build, this can do Kuva Fortress Steel Path survival. I have tested it on my main account. Obviously, I don't have Steel Path unlocked on uh the free to play through yet but i have tested it on my main account and it can very easily do that mission and farm acolytes it is not a problem for it and it is extremely extremely impressive notable you do absolutely need hunter munitions it's very required is there an upgrade to hunter munitions absolutely you can get the one that transfers impact into uh slash that is better than hunter munitions on this build the hunter munitions is a great budget option for the fallman that's pretty accessible so there are multiple options for this slot. There's a couple different mods that you can go for. Obviously, you can get that mod through Railjack. But yeah, this build, not hard to put together. The hardest mod to get on this build was Split Chamber for me because it didn't want to drop. But anyone will give you a Split Chamber because we don't use Split Chamber anymore at higher levels. Any higher level player, Split Chamber is completely useless to them because they're using Galvanized Chamber. So just ask someone for a Split Chamber, like... 
I don't care. Like if, if hey, if I'm on stream and you want a split chamber, I'll hook you up. Like I don't give a shit. Like I they have no use to me. They're worth nothing plat wise. Did I absolutely pay someone to platinum for it because I needed it? Yes, because that's kind of the rules of this account. I have to pay people what mods are worth, even if people would just give that shit away for free uh, all the time. But that's like, it's really mega accessible. The only thing here that's like not is critical delay and just fucking use point strike. It's so simple. These two mods, extremely farmable, very easy to get. Vital sense has not been a problem at all. Uh, yeah, it's just, just excellent. So yeah, this, this weapon, absolutely incredible. That's kind of the top end uh, of um, weapons that I've made so far in terms of MR anyway. To talk about some other weapons, uh, I'm going to start from the beginning real quick. Uh, so we have the Mark I bow, which I've sold at this point. This is the weapon that you should be starting with. If you didn't start with it, buy it for 15,000 credits. It's just worth it. Fuck the Skana. You can level it later, legitimately. If you started with a Skana, I would actually legitimately suggest that you just sell that shit if you don't have weapon slots open and grab the Mark I bow and just use this for the foreseeable future until you get the other weapons that we're going to start talking about. And even then, you're still going to use the Mark I bow until your next melee weapon upgrade, uh, which we're also going to be talking about. Mark I bow, this might as well be the only weapon for a new player. Everything else that you start with is too garbage to consider using. At least in my opinion, uh, the Mark I bow just way outperforms. It's just better. Like, plain, plain and simple, it's just better. Use the Mark I bow until you're on, like, Saturn. Like, unironically, until you're on, like, Saturn, use the Mark I bow. Because it's just that good. Uh, getting the stance for it and just being able to just slap enemies to death. Very simple builds that I've gone over in previous videos. Uh, Mark I bow is phenomenal. It's the best early game weapon, unironically. Like, buying, buying primary and secondary weapons, like... <laughs> Like, things that we used to do, like the Lex or or any of this other shit. It's just useless. However, there is one notable exception. If you are going to go to Deimos and you're going to go fight Lephantis, the Mark I bow, being a melee weapon, doesn't really work on Lephantis because, you know, he's got specific weak points and needs to be shot with a gun. Uh, an unmodded Lotto can kill Lephantis, like, really easily because of, like, the way his health is gated and stuff. You kind of just need a really high pellet count slash fire rate. So a completely unmodded Lotto is going to do you just fine for killing Lephantis, so don't worry about that at all. If you're having any concerns about fighting Lephantis, he's super easy. It's not a big deal in any way, shape, or form. Uh, you could, if you really wanted to make it easy, uh, you could be leveling the Mark I Strun, and I'm sure that does, you know, even better than the Lotto, but... You really, you really don't need more than the Lotto to kill Lephantis. Like, unironically, I did it on stream. It was very funny to find out how easy that fight actually is uh, in terms of, like, requirements. Because I was originally using the Paris, and a modded Paris, Mark I Paris, is worse than an unranked, unmodded Lotto. So, weird thing there, uh, but worth noting for those of you that are going in that direction. Other primaries. The first primary you should build is the Vectus. The Vectus has a very, very accessible build. Uh, this is, you know, very low level. Very good stuff. Uh, obviously, you know, you're going to be wanting to use one of like the split damage mods in here with this build. This is an uh, un, uh, un, uh, no potato, uh, no potato in this. Uh, and it's just four mods. Very simple. It's a rank six serration. It's a 60 60 elemental, which like you can use cold or whatever else you happen to have. Obviously, heat would be best, but I don't have that mod yet, even though it is pretty easy to farm. Um, you can definitely go and do that. And heat is going to be the best single element version that you're going to get of this weapon by far and then you use a crit mod and you use vital sense this critical delay is the better choice in my opinion but you can also use point strike We've gone over that in a previous video uh this is a great mr1 mr1 weapon to build this will meet your requirement for the uranus junction just to get through there and it's a great weapon just to have around also bonus for the vectus there are going to be sniper only sorties there is no uh sniper rifle that you can just buy off the market in order to fill that requirement and then just kind of do the mission as your warframe that doesn't exist so the vectus is really nice to have around for whenever that sortie requirement comes up so that you're able to complete the sortie uh whenever you want to basically now then for the other junction requirement we have the atomos the atomos is fantastic this is mr5 weapon uh atomos is just generally very good i mean the best weapons in the game that we have right now such as the kuva nucor they're pretty much all based off this like the the uh the gaze weapon um that you get off of Fortuna. That's also basically just the Atomos. All the really amazing secondaries are based on the Atomos, and the Atomos is in that category of amazing secondaries too. 
once again this is not actually even the best build i could be using for this uh, i did install a catalyst on this weapon but important note here is you don't need to first of all it'll still be just fine you could drop you know like uh lethal torrent if you wanted to and it's still going to be great you could drop target cracker too like depending on like what you've got here you, you you can really lower this build down and it'll still do some pretty good work because it's heat uh, I would suggest you use no other elements besides a heat on this weapon unless you're going to invest more forma into it because it doesn't come with a V polarity unfortunately notable upgrades on this build though is if you do have the 60 60 heat mod which means you have the one that costs seven instead of 11 in this slot to give 60 percent heat damage and then 60 percent status that is much much better than heated charge uh, and it will allow you to increase your hornet strike rank up to eight which tremendously increases the power of this build uh, allowing it to just shred rooms of dudes very very simply with this exact build you don't need prime mods and stuff to make a secondary work the secondary just has to already be very good uh so yeah excellent starter build for this uh great thing that you should be able to do around mr5 pretty easily once again i've just been really unlucky with getting that uh 60 60 heat mod in both my secondary and primary slots and then besides that uh, of course there is the zorus to talk about the zorus you should actually get around the same time that you get the vectus uh because it's an mr4 requirement and you need to do the first uh intro quest on fortuna and then after that you need to go and do uh the deadlock protocol do the deadlock protocol as soon as possible even if you can't finish it get to the point where it gives you the zorus and like if it's too hard to kill protea at the end fucking skip it just ignore it until later whenever it becomes easier get the zorus as it stands right now this is what i'm using on this build uh oh wait whoop forgot to switch this back I was trying it the other way but I like it actually better with like a leveled um 90 mod on here for right now until I get the upgrade to true steel um this is a great really new player very accessible build on here uh originally right whenever you get the Zorus you might not have a volatile quick return but I think I can pretty easily show that volatile quick return is very easy to get once you start grinding any amount of demo stuff I have 12 extra mods here so yeah really not hard to get at all uh, all these mods were very very easy for me to get literally the hardest mod in this to get was unironically true steel it didn't want to drop for me for some reason I don't know why but just it, it didn't want to it didn't want to give it to me uh, but this is just a common mod you can ask anyone for this if you run into the same problem that I did not a big deal at all uh but yeah this weapon is fantastic it is like the real shit also while we're here I forgot I did this uh this is the mark one bow build you, you throw this onto the mark one bow uh this all fits onto the mark one bow use this if you're really early on these mods you should have all of them uh you're you're given basically everything here just use this if you're a brand new player looking to use the mark one bow uh obviously you won't use astral twilight you'll just use the stance that you get from the mark one bow but otherwise it's exactly the same but yeah zorus absolutely phenomenal using explosive heavy attacks uh to clear hallways kill big enemies just really solve problems that you're going to be running into phenomenal weapon notable on where I'm going from here with weapons uh and kind of what my plan is right now we have some double affinity weekend weekends coming up so for grinding uh rep and stuff I have some weapons in here that are built uh I'm going to be getting through these as soon as I can but in terms of weapons that I'm actually looking to build uh in terms of a power increase the strofa so the strofa you get the blueprint from uh Venus's boss which is the same place you get Rhino so you're probably going to run into it anyway while you're farming for Rhino uh, and if you don't that's fine I mean it's not like that boss is super hard right um and then from there the strofa is an MR10 weapon so you do need to get to MR10 to be able to use this but the strofa can really do a lot of problem solving where the Zorus can't pretty much anywhere that the Zorus doesn't solve the problem the strofa does uh and that's gonna be places like Necromex the Zorus is actually like kind of bad against Necromex whereas the strofa is phenomenal the Zorus is good to okay at disruption but the strofa is phenomenal at disruption and disruption being a very important game mode where we're going to be farming a ton of relics and honestly like most of like the important relics in the game uh for what we're trying to get in terms of prime items strofa is going to be an excellent tool for you to grab alternatively you can get the redeemer prime and they perform very similar jobs uh redeemer prime has some advantages and the strofa has some advantages they, they kind of they're 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 side grades to one another I would generally say but the strofa is going to be always available uh also in order to get the strofa you have to do the missions where you would farm protea protea is an excellent excellent warframe that i would highly advise you get especially if you're going to be doing railjack a bunch i personally think that we are going to be doing railjack a bunch on this account for a variety of reasons we'll get into later um but the side effect of probably getting protea or at least you know 
doing some of that farm to getting closer to getting a protea theoretically uh going to be really good also as like kind of a double farm for this really good notably the zorus by itself can do all of the the different um chambers like at, at all the different key levels uh to get the strofa so if you have the zorus and you built the zorus with the build that i just showed you can do that farm which also means you can get a sister of parvos uh, after of course you complete call of the tempestari and everything really easily the zorus kind of completes that requirement so the zorus leads itself into another very powerful upgrade in the form of the strofa which i'm still you know farming out and going for still although i have the the highest level the part with the strofa stock so that was nice got that on the first run so yeah great stuff for there okay so uh other random tips for new players and stuff that i've been making sure that i'm doing do your fucking maru missions for the love of god i think i've already done it for this week yeah i, I have do your maru missions this is maru's bazaar it'll pop up i think it's in the alerts window that you have a maru's bazaar mission to do it'll pop up go to maru's bazaar walk in there's maru tell her you want to find an ayatan treasure do that mission it is supremely good at giving you enough endo to keep going and progressing obviously uh you are going to have endo in other ways and I personally think that I'm doing pretty good on endo on this account overall obviously I've been using it in smart ways and where I need to but like I also have a good amount of Ayatan treasures built up like this is what one two three four five six I have six three of which are full um and all, also three of these are going to be you know saving for a night wave that could potentially pop up uh but yeah like just getting also the uh stuff out of this fantastic stuff other benefit to being mr10 for anyone that doesn't know is uh mr10 is what unlocks the auto install for this yes you get the helmet system before you get auto install um for your ayatan sculptures so i'm also looking forward to grinding that out and getting that that feature unlocked so <laughs> that's also just a, a funny thing to note uh but yeah the sculptures system has been super fantastic to me uh, in terms of keeping me uh, on enough endo uh, to keep progressing and upgrading my mods that are very important notable stuff for credits obviously uh, I have you know, like my credits have been on screen I have 10 million right now I had 12 million or I, I basically 11 million now I had 12 million uh whenever I uh farmed them out 12 million seemed like a pretty good spot to stop uh with the double credit weekends that we've been getting uh the place that I would highly highly advise is get a squad on double credit weekends there's always people there do the index index not hard people are going to be doing it you're gonna have more experienced players doing it that also still need credits uh the index is really easy on a double credit weekend it, you I did get lucky I only needed to farm for about an hour the reason for that is because I logged in and got a credit booster and we fucking slap assed that shit and we just did like an hour of the index and then I had 12 million credits to play with that is more than plenty uh for the amount of credits I'm planning on spending for like the near future maybe eventually I'll spend more than that but the index will still be available and the index is not hard this is another thing that you can just bring Rhino to like very simply you can just bring Rhino to it also mag is not bad at the index like she's fine for it so you can also bring her there uh if you're early on you can get taxied to this mission I did not do that but if you want to like get taxied to it and have someone kind of like help you out just doing one run uh of the index at max rank is going to really solve a lot of really early game credit issues you might be running into so that's also a consideration to make uh but yeah index great place for farming credits are there better yes are those places super high requirements in order to get in and do effectively absolutely 100 they are the index is the most accessible place to do so would highly advise it okay Whew. lots to talk about let's talk about open world grinds because last time on the free well the, the last free to play through that wasn't the night wave uh, speed run because that's kind of a different thing on our last night wave the reason I or not last night wave last free to play through that was like the big major one I quit out of that free to play through because the rep grinds oh my god the rep grinds were so so bad it was soul crushing to be a low MR player and try and progress on any open world it, it felt fruitless and it was just dog shit happy to report things are much better now I do have uh, a lot of positives and also a few complaints in certain areas so we're just going to go in the order that these open worlds were released starting with the Plains of Eidolon so on Cetus uh, we'll, we'll just go down and like I'll show my ranks and everything while we're here 
But on, on Cetus, I've had a great time on the planes with getting my rep. Now, notably, there is a really shitty opening grind that you need to do where you need to get the Arcwing launcher segment. The Arcwing launcher segment, I think, is a big problem because I, we actually just need to talk, or I guess I can just pop it up here. So the Arcwing launcher segment is a thing that you need to get out of your clan. And this is it right here. So this fucking thing you need before you can build the Arcwing launchers so that you can use your Arcwing in the open worlds. I hate this thing. You can also buy it, which feels like a fucking scam. Do not spend platinum on this thing, even though it sucks to farm. DE needs to fix this, and honestly, please remove it from the game. So this costs you 100,000 credits, which is a pain in the ass as a new player. 50 Grok, 50 Erudite, which is not the worst, but is annoying, especially when you don't have the Arcwing. And then 1,200 Oxium. Of note, if you need Oxium, a good place to farm it is Io on Jupiter. It's kind of the only spot I found that gives any kind of a reasonable amount of Oxium. So definitely go there if you need it for Zephyr or for this fucking thing. Uh, I hate this thing. I hate that you need a clan in order to get this baseline functionality. I hate the whole thing to do with it. It sucks. And then you have the Arcwing launcher. Just in general, that you also have to build. And you only have to build this once. Oh, so th this costs basically like 50 Grok and uh, 50 Iridite, like the other one does. And then some negligible materials, like I think it's Ferrite and stuff. It costs very, very low amounts, right? So building the actual Arcwing launcher, not a big deal. Building the segment, absolutely nightmare experience. I hated it the whole time. The reason I hated it the whole time is because you cannot play open world content with other people without this thing. The, the play experience of playing without this is that you walk out into the planes, everyone takes off and flies away and goes and does the objective, and you never get there before the objective is completed unless it's a fucking mobile defense where people are just waiting around on their assholes. It is terrible. It is an awful play experience. Do I think you should have to build something to get this functionality? Sure. If you don't need the segment and they delete this from existence and you just build the regular Arcwing launcher, so maybe, you know, you grab a little Grok, grab a little Erudite, kind of experience the open world the way some people at DE probably want you to, that's a fine and dandy experience for you to be able to go out and do that, build that thing, and then have that base functionality. I am okay with that. I don't think that it absolutely needs to be a thing that all players always have access to immediately. It's fine if you have to do a small build for it so you get a little bit of time on the ground to kind of admire the planes because I do think it looks nice. However, going needing to go and farm 1200 oxium it, it's it's just dreadful. Absolutely like it immediately soured my experience of playing uh through this because it just feels like bullshit where people will have a bad time for a long time, especially people that don't know where to get that oxium or that don't have 100,000 credits to spare, which as a really early game player, you might not so someone interacting with this content and coming to the planes and being like, oh yeah, I want to do the open world. You can't until you go do like 40 waves of IO on Jupiter. Do you know that? No, there's nothing breadcrumbing you there or anything like that. And it's, it's terrible. It's really bad. It needs to be fixed. It is awful. Now for planes in general, I do have another issue that if you're going to be doing bounties and stuff, uh, these bounties are not good. They do not give a good amount of rep for your time invested uh, because well, we have we have what the good version of this is. It's Deimos. Deimos gives you a really hefty amount of rep. It lets you future proof and build up tokens that you can spend later to get that rep at a later day. Maybe you can't play the next day. You just grind on the first day uh, enough rep so you can turn in the next day and just log in real quick if you don't have time. The way Deimos works in terms of bounties and the rewards that are on those bounties is just stellar because even if even comparing across like uh universal rewards like this 400 endo in demos that's a thousand endo like we're like the number differences there they just need to be updated and maybe like applying the token system to these other open worlds is appropriate we're gonna get more into that with fortuna um but yeah the way that these bounties give out rewards is not great however a benefit i will say uh for uh the planes is that there are some really good mods in here the first uh the first bounty here, there are excellent mods that are in the uncommon slot. Obviously, you see, you know, Stretch and Hornet Strike, two very big staple mods for a lot of new players. Pressure points in the commons. You're definitely going to want that for your Mark 1 bow. There's really good stuff here. 
in terms of the, the this in terms of those mod rewards that have been applied to this great stuff 50 endo could definitely be 200 like this 400 could definitely be a thousand in terms of like those types of things but the actual mods that are included here are good do i think morphix should be at rare no probably could be something better maybe like a more important mod other things whenever this rotates it can have stuff like streamline and other great mods in it good stuff other things that are in here that are quite good reaping spiral um sides are really nice reaping spiral is the is the stance for them it's not hard to get but it's good there uh speed triggers like usable the second bounty is like probably overall the worst because you, you know you're looking at like 100 endo here and like all this bad stuff 200 cryotic just like very bad rewards for like what the time you're putting in is um but whenever you get to the third one you start getting the lenses this is going to be the, be the way that you're getting those lenses worth noting the best way to do these is to actually start it up do the first objective because that has the highest chance of the common rewards and then you can get stuff like vigilante armaments which is also actually like a pretty good budget mod um Bazarin lenses unira lenses this rotates and can be xenoric and stuff that you're probably actually looking for like xenoric and xenoric uh and the xenoric lenses uh those are the ones you're probably looking for so it, it can be that but then notably you can get the you can this is where you can start getting auger mods so you have like auger seeker here which is not very useful but down here you start getting stuff like well here here for, first of all here's the xenoric lens which is great uh and then you have like the gladiator mods which sometimes see use and then auger secrets auger secrets is one of the mods on here that i don't have and this is definitely worth farming auger secrets is not only worth a lot of platinum but also is a staple mod and a good number of builds that want to build for strength because obviously it gives you strength and also its secondary effect is very very good so great stuff there the top end one is where things get like a lot lot worse uh the general rewards for this are just not good the rep's not good and like you know revenant if you want to farm revenant i mean you're doing this right sure but like everything else that's in here is like kind of whatever the eidolon lens is just uh, it's unrealistic for people to build those higher grade lenses in my opinion unless you're like way further in or you need it for some specific reason just not worth doing and then you'll need a little bit of breath of the eidolon uh but you can do the same like do the very first objective and then quit out thing that you would do on this mission to try and get lenses or this mission for that matter this is enric uh you can do that same exact thing here to get that breath of the idol or the 400 endo and that, that is sometimes worth it depending on how good the first objective is most of the time though if you want to run bounties in order to get your rep try and catch it whenever it's an auger secrets and just always do the fourth one because it's that good of a mod and that worth it to grind otherwise obviously there's also plague star and stuff happening right now just as a side note because plague star is going on i actually haven't done uh like very much of plague star on this account like we did some to farm some of like the nidus relics and things uh but i actually haven't really found a big need for forma i have 10 right now and i've only used one so i haven't really found a big need for forma on the stuff that i've been going for i've been going for like a lot more of like a budget oriented build that doesn't need a lot of that uh so for right now i don't think plague star is super necessary for a very new player gonna be more so for like those mid and later end players that need that forma to like bolster up uh, their kuva weapons or some other weapons you're trying to like you know get to their max power now to talk about the standing increases as you can see i have 20,000 daily standing cap remaining i'm only mr8 at mr8 this feels good feels super solid to be able to get 20,000 rep every day i feel very good about where the caps are at this point uh i think it's it's stellar getting to mr8 not hard not hard to get to mr8 mr8 is very very achievable it's below average for most of the active player base as we know from stats that de has given us uh and it already feels good so at those higher mrs where there's going to be a lot more players i think it's going to be totally fine in terms of the amount of rep you can get now notably uh, i'm going to briefly show the the way that i farm rep here uh and it's to uh, switch to avara first and foremost use avara and then all you do is make sure you're on private make sure you're going solo it's very simple you can do this at day or night it's a little bit faster at night because the vasca cavats are worth a lot although keep in mind the vasca cavats are bugged right now so you can't use avara's uh bow in order to do this uh, on your bow if you want to switch to sleep arrow activate xenric if you've got that stuff unlocked in order to get some more energy switch to the trank rifle aim down sight hear that beep that beep means it detects something so right over there we have three birds now all we got to do fly up you can equip the trank rifle while you're flying around which is also noted there's some common chondricks oh, whoops didn't hit the right button that's fine there we go put them all to sleep oh, whoop. there we go they're all asleep they didn't notice a thing grab them all perfect captures grab the whole crew 
You just walk out and and grab like whatever is there, and then you can just once again whip out the tranquil rifle while you're flying. Teleport around. Usually I go over this way uh, towards like the kind of big bloated whale thing. It's usually where I tend to go. And you're just looking for the orange. Do I wish you could choose a more discernible color for this? Whatever it was despawned. I do wish you could choose a more discernible color than what we get. But it is what it is. Sometimes they spawn below you. But also, sometimes they're the birds. Yeah, it turns out on orange is uh, sometimes hard to see on these backgrounds. I'm sure one of you watching the video has spotted them already. I'm probably just blind. Enjoy my blindness. Check over here. There we go. There's some Chondricks. Grab all four of these. You know, we're looking at like, you know, uh, basically an eighth of like the total rep that I can get. This is much faster than bounties. Usually I'm doing it slow here. Uh, just I'm trying to do it very quickly for the video. Uh, but yeah, basically you just run out and like sleep a bunch of creatures. Uh, we all have obviously got a bunch of commons there whenever you get the higher rarity ones, which happens fairly often. It's even faster than that. But basically that's how you get sea disrupt super quick. Obviously just doing that, which only took like a couple minutes, maybe, uh, that is worth that 2,400. That's worth more than half of the max rank bounty, which takes like 15 to 20 minutes usually. So yeah, don't do these bounties for rep unless you're looking to also get something like Augur Secrets. That's the only time you should be doing this. Uh, but yeah, also we got actually over 5,000 there because it, it was it was showing me a miscounted number apparently. Whatever. You got a bunch of rep there because obviously we started at uh, 20k. Great stuff. Going through your rep that way is super, super solid. Would highly advise it as a way to grind the planes rep. However, a well, big note here is that this... Um, this grind does have a problem and if you want to do it that's great for the reward i'm about to talk about but if you don't that's also totally fine and what i mean by that is um there's kind of nothing worth it here uh i know that might sound kind of weird but there's kind of only one item that i consider to be worth the grind here and that i would be going for and it's from hawk and it's not a zaw it is not a zaw at all it's the ostron armor set I think this armor set is fucking sweet and i think it's akin to a prime armor set and for a free-to-play player this is dope and i mean i want it for my zephyr and that's part of the reason i'm doing this grind the other part of the reason is of course that i want to experience it for the purposes of the free to play through but zaws and stuff not really worth it this armor set looks sweet and i want it other reasons to be on the planes there kind of aren't any uh so yeah for the purposes of like the main rep grind there aren't really reasons to do it but it is super easy and the rank up rewards are very simple to get through now we've talked about the planes and where it's at right now after adding hunting it's been quite good let's talk about fortuna because fortuna sucks it sucks bad it is terrible it is the worst by a country mile it is the worst it is awful it's dreadful. Please, for the love of God, DE, please fix Fortuna. Because it is the worst of anything in the open world in basically every single way. 
or a new player. So if we come here and we look at the Fortuna bounties just real quick, you're going to see some like really similar trends. This is actually worth even less than the uh, rank five of Fortuna bounty uh, or uh, the rank five Cetus bounty is only worth 4,000, which is terrible. Absolute fucking garbage, completely fucking useless to my purposes. And then in terms of other stuff that's in here, like, sure. Do, do the mecha mods get used in some edge cases? Yeah. Yeah, they do. That's true. But the main thing people are going to be looking at from these is going to be the debt bonds which you need to rank up so in terms of value for what you're getting on these the rewards are all super low the endo is trash hilariously like terrible and awful uh garuda is a mega high investment warframe that's not going to be useful to people who aren't like a like way way further in can you get zenerg lenses and stuff here sure but it, I mean, it's worse than any other open world for doing that uh it's rough and the thing that makes it even rougher is the standing increases, the rank ups. I'm at three right now. Going to four, I have farmed this stuff already, and I hate it. I absolutely despise it. Getting the advances debt bonds and the medical debt bonds, like specifically the medical debt bonds. I don't even have enough to get to rank five yet. I'm at 10 over. I think I need like another five or something like that in order to have enough medical debt bonds in order to rank up. And both of the ways to get these are raw suffering like raw and pure complete suffering because on one hand you have the option to go through ticker and ticker can also hire railjack members which we'll talk about in a, a future thing but if you want to get debt bonds you can talk to ticker and you can see there's training and shelter 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 uh here's 10 medical debt bonds and then here is five medical and 10 training however you'll look at how much it caught like all of these like these ones are are like you know the um, ones that you're going to need for like the earlier ranks and like these are fine right like this is 37 000 credits like that's super doable do an index run not a big deal to get these but these medical debt bonds this wants over half of the total rubido i've farmed on this account for 10 medical debt bonds and farming medical debt bonds is so soul crushing that I would suggest you do this. It's that bad. Like over half of the Rubido, like a lot over half. <laughs> like five, like what is this? Like five eighths or so of the total that I have accrued on this account. Obviously, I've spent a little bit, but yeah. And the credits too, which are no joke really early on for 10 medical debt bonds. And then on this one, this is, you know, over a fifth of the ferret I've acquired. And it, it's just rough. It is rough out here. And legitimately, I might actually need like another 15. Oh, no, I have 20 out of 10. I have 10 left over. I think it's like 15 or so. So, I, I yeah. I mean, the training debt bonds don't really do anything for me. So, I'm probably just going to do this one. And like, I should do this because I don't want to farm the other way to get these. So, we're going to grab this, even though it feels terrible to spend resources this way. Like, it feels like garbage. Uh, just so I don't have to farm it the other way, which is literally soul crushing. So the way that you would farm lenses by doing the first bounty and then quitting out is the only way to farm medical debt bonds. And you do it on bounty three. Bounty three, you hope to God you get a fast objective. If you don't get a fast objective, if it gives you a fucking mobile defense, literally quit out of the mission. On purpose, walk back into Fortuna until it gives you an objective that you can do in under like 30 seconds to a minute. Go out, do that first objective. Get the medical debt bonds literally reset fail the next objective on purpose literally reset do the first objective again if you can start the same bounty from outside at the bounty giver over and over that has a really fast first objective and a long second objective that's usually the best you can do because the long second objectives are like uh situated in one zone so you can fail them really easily it only takes like 15 seconds to purposefully fail them uh so you can like basically break it down to getting like 45 seconds for a chance at two medical debt bonds which you need like 40 of it's awful it is fucking soul crushing to do this farm and like you're actually better off just spending your damn resources with ticker because like because th this is left entirely up to chance there's no guarantee on these and i hate it so much i hate it so much i really really wish there was there was a change to the system like, if they're going to change things to the way Deimos works, which is just much better in every way, please, please, for the love of God, change it to appropriate amounts of the different bonds that come from the different uh, bounties here. 
So you get training depth bonds in an amount that's equal to the amount of rep that it should be to like, you know, equate to Deimos from here because they are worth rep. You can turn them in for rep. The system already exists on Fortuna and just make that the rep reward from Falling Star. And then for Protect the Innocent, make it Shelter Depth Bonds. And then for this one, make it Medical Depth Bonds. And then for this one, make it Advances Depth Bonds. And then for this one, make it Familial Depth Bonds. So that you're always getting that necessary material. And the reason it's necessary is because you're also going to turn them in for this standing at like really high amounts of them. If they made that change, it would fix the ranking up of Fortuna being a fucking nightmare horror show because it is not fun. Uh, in term, in other terms, uh, there's also a, the availability of hunting on Fortuna. However, there is no free hunt on Fortuna. And what I mean by that is you can't do what we just showed on the planes where you just go out of the door and there's just animals that live in the environment. Fortuna is huge. And in order to farm the different animals, you specifically need uh, their lure. And those lures you get from the business. So we talked to the business here. We can go into his wares. And then he has these different lures. You can get the poppers lure really early, the vermink lure and all that stuff. And then I have access to up to bolarolas right now. Now, a common bolarola is only worth 1,000. And the rare bolarola is worth 2,000. But you're normally going to get the commons, like almost always. So on a day where you're a little lucky, you are probably going to have to hunt if you're MR8. If you're higher, it's going to be more. You're probably going to have to hunt like almost 20 Bolarola in order to get your standing for the day. And hunting Bolarola is not exactly fast. Like we're looking at like a half an hour to an hour of hunting and like just going from like the different spot to spot and like waiting and killing the enemies that are inevitably going to attack you because you're just trying to do something that's not killing them. Uh, like it's, it sucks. Does this farm get better? Uh-huh. Absolutely. Once you get to max rank, you get Kuberdons. Kuberdons are worth like fucking four to 6,000 rep. So if you're any MR, it's going to take you like five hunts to be done with your rep for the day. And it's not going to be a big deal. So that uh, once you're max rank, getting the rep is super easy through hunting. And Navara is fantastic for it. But earlier than that, uh, I think... Like maybe the Stovers and Harasks are going to be worth it, but like it hits it, it feels really rough all the way up to rank three. And I mean, like, there's a lot more farm to go. It would be really nice if like rank three was where you got access to Kubernetes, uh, and like you know you had to deal with you know the lower stuff down here like Poppers, Vermink, and then Sawgaws and Bolarola were ranks one and then two, like for the Poppers and Vermink, and then rank two Sawgaw Bolarola, and then for rank three, then they give you the rest of the animals to go and like hunt and enjoy hunting and stuff. I think that would be good, uh, but yeah, right now hunting kind of a rough proposition because you have to already be max rank by the time it's really worth it. Other things that you can do that should be a thing you can go do that are instead a nightmare for no reason is no, you can trade gems into Smokefinger and these are actually at pretty good rates, like 200 for each piece of Goblite, like Thist and Zodian are worth a thousand each, like that's totally fine. Uh, Amorast is at a good, you know, good amount. Noctrol's not bad. Vasman's like fine for like the amounts of these that you get. Not a big deal. However, the place you would get these from is Exploiter Orb. Exploiter Orb, not a particularly hard fight. It's a cool fight and it's a good fight. However, you fucking need Thermia for it. And Thermia is the worst. So first and foremost, for Thermia, there's no bounty for it. There's no bounty for it, so matchmaking for it, not an option. You need that Thermia in order to go and fight Exploiter. If someone will taxi you there, worth doing. Go with them. Uh, but if you're just trying to do it solo and you're just going to go out into the world and like farm this Thermia, it takes ages. It takes so long and it is so annoying. The thing that you have to do is you have to get multiple canisters from Exploiter which is like around uh, the big statue on the map. And then you have to take it hundreds of meters away to whatever thermal vent you're at. And if you're alone, ideally you'd be taking four of these canisters, which you can only hold one of, and putting it in the vent. And then you'd run back to Exploiter and get another one to also put that in the vent to try and speed it up. But that's like one of the most annoying processes that it ever could be. And it's just a fucking glorified mobile defense mission. And it's the most annoying shit in the world. I don't know why it takes 
100,000 years to do. I don't know why it hasn't been fixed. Just to be like, bring one canister to one Thermia event. You get one Thermia. Uh, and like, at like a reasonable time per event. Because you, you have to fly all over this open world in order to do this. Uh, it's mega annoying. It is... It is complete trash. And you have to do multiple events just to fill up one canister. Uh, yeah, it's... It's absolutely awful. It's... It's... It's it's unplayable. Like, I, I would literally say that it is uh, completely not worth doing ever under any circumstances unless you have a group of four. If you don't have a group of four, literally don't do it. Just quit. Just, just instead do something the fuck else that will be worth your time. Is there a bunch of stuff on Fortuna that's, like, worth having... Yes, but nothing is worth going through that fucking Thermia event alone. Like, don't do it. It's it sucks. It's so bad. Even if even if you're at a power level where like you can really easily crush it, it still is such like a boring and bad event that like yeah, it's just it's just not good. Like if you have fun with it, more power to you. Like please enjoy yourself. But holy shit, is it, it it's it's bad. Like from a gameplay perspective, I think it's terrible. I think it's completely completely awful and it sucks that it's gating exploiter which is a really good fight that has really good rewards that could also help alleviate this rep problem because exploiter gives you a bunch of resources that you could turn into smoke finger and then be able to get that progress but yeah it's really unfortunate that you can't do exploiter reasonably because there's just this wall of literal excrement in between you and doing exploiter so yeah yeah doing uh Doing Fortuna has been awful. It has been really bad. And also, in terms of, like, mining and stuff, uh, there used to be a thing where you could go in and, in and out of Exploiter's Cave uh, to quickly get, like, refreshing mining spots that would also have helped a lot. But that seems like that doesn't happen anymore whenever you go in and out of that door. So that's gone, and now you'd have to go to each individual cave, which are super far apart from each other, and it's just more consistent to do hunting even at a lower level, which also just feels bad. So, yeah, Fortuna... Are there things that are good here? Yes. There's a number of kit guns that are very strong. Do you want to be into Vox Solaris for doing Profit Taker? Almost certainly. Is this, once you are finally done with like the upfront farm here and getting this to rank five so you can go over here into the back, is that worth doing? Yes. You're going to be able to get like your ground based arc guns and stuff and like do Profit Taker, which is very good, and like get parts for your amps and like skip all of the uh, planes related amp grinding that is soul crushing and awful. Uh, you can skip that and just do the grind here and get some access to amp parts. But Fortuna, the way it's balanced right now in terms of like just progressing through it and like having a good time and not feeling like you're wasting your time most of the time is really rough right now. So yeah, it's tough stuff for Fortuna. I think it's the worst open world by far at this point. Like I think it is actively dreadful to go and do. Moving on, let's talk about Deimos. Deimos is great. I love Deimos. Deimos is fantastic. Deimos has very few issues. I have very, very few issues with Deimos. Deimos has been a wonderful, wonderful time. So, let's talk about it. Deimos, right off the bat, you do the intro quest to Deimos, you're in the open world. Pretty much immediately, you're out in that open world. That Out in that open world, you have a lot of benefits out there. Uh, it's a great place to farm plastids for Rhino, as we went over earlier. Uh, you can do that very simply. You just, like, pop the chests that are out there, which I'll, I'll show what those look like for anyone that doesn't know what they're looking for um in a moment here but let's just talk about what you're going to get out of Deimos first and foremost there are a lot of fantastic rewards here uh if we talk to Vilcor uh we can just talk about the weapons that he provides first and foremost the, sp the spore laser parts this is one of the best kit gun parts in the game I think this is overall probably the best kit gun front that you're going to get for a pistol based kit gun fantastic definitely going to want to pick this up and make a kit gun out of it it's a great great weapon uh, the Caratinos, this is a totally... If you want to use Claws, this is the best one in the game. They're not hard to get. Very solid for a melee weapon if you're going to be building into that. Uh, we have both available for the Sepulchrum. Although this is MR14, so it's going to be later. Se Sepulchrum is a really good secondary weapon. Very solid. Very strong. You can get a lot done with it. Viable for Steel Path. Good stuff here. Uh, this is also, also where you can get Lavos. Lavos is not particularly hard to build. Like, I mean, he has this, you know, there's this Hexanon cost, which is a little high. Kaba, uh, the Kabachan, or however you want to say that. The Embolos, not super hard to get. Just, like, do a little mining. The Trapezium, uh, not a big deal. The Titanium, not bad at all. A little bit of Oxium farming in there. 
Uh, and then the Lavos chassis, Argon, not a big deal. Nitane comes out of the Night Wave, not a big deal. And the Cryotic, only 1500 Cryotic is actually not so bad. And you're not going to be spending a lot of Cryotic, at least to my experience so far. So if you want to get Lavos as a Railjack pilot, which he is good for, that's also a great option here. And then at MR13, which is hilariously before the Sepulchrum, get the Trumna. The Trumna, I would say, is one of the best primaries in the game. And it's available here. What a fantastic weapon. And then, if we look down here, the Sea-Doo is also available. The Sea-Doo, weird, it's weird that the Trumna and the Sea-Doo aren't, like, flipped in terms of when you get them, because the Trumna's MR-13 and this is MR-8. But the Sea-Doo, also, one of the best weapons in the game. You use a Forma to build this weapon, but let me tell you right now, it's worth building. And this, you need to get them to, like, max rank. I, I believe friend is, oh, no, 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 sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. It's friend for the blueprint and then family for the parts. That's what it is. Uh, family's max rank, but it's worth going to. It's worth getting max rank here. It's just worth having because there's just good, notable rewards here that you're gonna want. You're gonna want to progress through this stuff. Like, Vilcor has a fantastic inventory of things. Also, you get access to the helmet system through Sun over here, which is not bad to get. We'll talk about the helmet system at a later date in terms of how accessible it is for new players, but there's that. Um, and then like you have daughter over there for her different rewards and things like that. Big notable thing here is that bounties are really, really good. Let's just compare the amounts of rep real quick. So with this, it says I'm going to get 119 tokens. Now in each of the open worlds, you get bonus points for doing the bonus objectives and you're going to get bonus mother tokens here for completing those bonus objectives. So we're just going to compare across with what it says here because you're going to get a little bit more than it's actually stated as because I'm going to assume you're going to do some of those bonus objectives because some of them are pretty easy. Comparing across on Fortuna and on the planes, you got about 4,000. Now these mother tokens are worth 100 a piece. So real fucking easy math. This top rank bounty is worth 12,000. That is a 3x multiplier on how much the bounties are worth as compared to the other two open worlds. And not to mention, we have Amber Stars here. We have more Kuva. We have more Endo. Um, you have Relics in here. Obviously, you get Zaku from here. Uh, you have the Endless Artifact Hunter one. This is really good. There's like decent amounts of Endo, Amber Stars. Uh, there's mods in here that are worth good amounts of Endo. Like you have just like Endo on each one. That's like a reasonable tier for like how hard this is going to be. This has scaling rewards. The longer you do it, another 15% mother tokens every round you complete. Very solid. It's just good. It's just plain and simple better. Like the top rank bounty is very worth doing. Those thousand Endo drops like actually really matter as a new player. Uh, yeah, I would highly advise this be the way that you grind through the Deimos rep. It's definitely the most efficient way to do so. And notably, because they changed some of the rank up rewards, uh, whenever you're doing your rank ups, if I'm going from three to four. I needed to build these two mutagens and these were not expensive to acquire and building them is actually pretty easy too. I need one son token and one father token. Father tokens, very easy to get. Son tokens, a little harder to get. You need to catch some animals and stuff. Ivara takes care of that very easily, but you can easily do this with the regular Trank Rifle. Because you only need one Sun Token now, pretty simple to do. Obviously, I have two here. Uh, but yeah, the requirements for this, not very hard. Easy stuff, good stuff. I feel good about it. And that that's great, because it's a good amount of standing that I'm getting. Uh, obviously, like, you know, whenever we, whenever we look at the kind of rate as, like, bounties to amount of standing that I have, like, we're doing one bounty and that's more than half like a lot more than half because of course there's that bonus of my daily standing that I'm getting at this point so I do two of the max rank bounties maybe I get some endo and other stuff that I need out of it uh and then I can keep doing them to future proof for different days so if I'm like oh okay well tomorrow I'm not gonna play but I want to make sure I get this rep I can do two more bounties which also don't take that long they take much less time than the Fortuna bounties and bing bang boom I have my rep for the next day the system just feels good and it just is good like plain and simple it just is good and i really really hope that this gets like just backwards compatible applied to the planes and fortuna to fix their bounties and that also goes for like the increase in the amount of like endo and stuff that you get because by far uh deimos is the most worth it in terms of the rewards that you get and also just like the gameplay experience from kind of all angles now 
the notable downside on this and it's not with like actually like the core of Deimos is that I personally think that the isolation vaults still need help uh, I wish that these were more like actively objective based and not like a bunch of mobile defense which is what they are right now however with where I am right now I can pretty comfortably do isolation vault tier one not a big deal however for tier two and above it really uh does feel like I'm gonna need the strofa to really punch through those necromex in a reasonable amount of time the fulman's not super effective against them uh and the strofa is one of those weapons that is stellar at killing them uh Zephyr also notably like her four like just doesn't work on them and things of that nature her three obviously keeps you safe but there, there's a good number of factors that make it so that you're gonna want more specific weaponry to do the higher tier vaults here and that's kind of whenever it becomes more worth it is you're you know, like doing these higher tier vaults and getting the rep for the other rep grind uh down below done much quicker uh but yeah that's a that's kind of what's going on on Deimos just super worth it super worth it stuff here just just purely good things I have uh a lot of good stuff to say about this like the minor problems with the isolation vaults like grand total you don't need to do isolation vaults for that long in my opinion in order to get access to your necromech uh and get that stuff started and built up so it's it's a really minor issue overall it's not like it's like affecting the core loop of Deimos negatively which is just hey click on the fifth bounty and go get your rep for the day in like a really like straightforward simple manner there's no weird stuff that you have to do and it feels really nice Deimos is phenomenal for that uh so yeah this is a, a very long video very in-depth I think talking about uh kind of like the general experience here going through stuff uh like where I've progressed to we are going to be working towards the steel path going into the future uh hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video uh a lot to talk about here oh also I said I would show uh the crates out here also this is another thing that Zephyr's really good at that I actually wanted to highlight anyway a little bonus here for you guys it's just yet yet another thing uh that Zephyr's very good at we fly out here so these are the containers you're looking for these uh Rolazor, these infested cysts open these up you know 50, 50 51 plastids like that's going to really you know getting those drops multiple times is going to really cover uh what you're looking for in terms of uh, rep that right there what I just showed uh on Zephyr is a phenomenal uh for getting a those crates open and then also looking at a little bit of what we've got for um for farming these this one's obviously like a bad one because it's got like the uh the explody dudes or whatever uh but like you can use her too to like not kill enemies but bring them to this and then the way you do these is that you bring them to the tower and then you basically kill them with the operator and that gives you resources out of it uh to not to not go too deep on that uh basically you know we'll come out here have these enemies over here I'm just doing stuff uh and then you just go out into uh generally this area is where I start actually is I don't I go down the, the stairs area kind of and then this area you can see on the map because I use Steve's wit hit to break all the items uh get a bunch of resources you can also move these big dudes with this saturated muscle mass out of that another 55 plastids uh, and obviously you can grab this like a little bit slower whenever you're like mag or whatever because she doesn't have a ability that pulls this stuff together uh, of note her two does not break like this bomb residue and stuff so if you need to farm that you will have to break it with like whatever other weapon you have to be using but you can do that with stuff like the Zorus and it's not a big deal but, like just throw throwing this out and like getting those materials like baffolite tether maw all these like different materials that you can get uh, and then it's like being able to use Zephyr to fly around and then especially if you really want to get a lot of resources uh you go into the caves because the caves usually have a lot of those drops in them so we're looking at you know, like hit two zupa ball the items uh just like flying through here grabbing as as much as you can really just like just full greeting like if you need haptics or ganglion uh which you're probably going to want uh for just like yeah dendrite blastoma just all, all these different like unique resources you're going to need to get different tokens uh from all the different uh members of the family on Deimos like th this is just like a worthwhile thing to do this is an extra thing you can do with Zephyr it's kind of like uh baby's first Zaku because Zaku is the one that does this farm most efficiently but because uh you actually have the benefit of also bringing all the items to one space and just being able to kind of run through your two in order to get all the items that you're breaking out of these crates it works really actually very well and you get of course the added mobility of just being able to use Zephyr's one and go places and just get all of these resources like very very fast like really easily very quickly just grabbing 
you know, a, honestly, like a ton of items. Yeah, doing this run and like getting the, the a couple of fish parts and stuff without having to go fishing. Like, it's very quick. Like, we've only been out here, what, three three minutes, it says? And like, we've got a ton of stuff here. Like, sporlet sacks and like all this stuff that you might need to catch specific fish for. Like, fuck all that shit. Just go through this. Yeah, really, really, really worthwhile. Uh, especially if you log in and get a resource booster. Keep in mind that all this stuff will be doubled. So that makes it twice as good. So yeah, definitely, definitely would advise uh, you taking Zephyr and doing some open world grinding as well. Uh, because of course you can do that with Grok Jewel and Iridite and all that stuff if you need that. And any resources that you might want to get from Fortuna that are eligible in this way too. Great, great stuff. Really, another, another huge benefit of the uh, the buff to Zephyrus 2 is that she can now be used for that in a very effective manner. Obviously, you will need vacuum, but you should be running that anyway. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of the, the breakdown of like where we're at, what we're doing, how we're progressing on the free to play through my thoughts on like the uh, the early game progression through the different open worlds and how I feel about each of them experiencing it from more of a new player perspective. Uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this very long video uh and uh let me know let me know if you guys want like more kind of longer form discussion based stuff like this on the free to play through where i'm trying to get a lot of details into one video uh and i will see you guys next time bye, -bye.